This is the inverting summing amplifier. It's a very interesting uh, circuit. And uh, we're just uh, illustrating it here with the three inputs, although we could have uh, as many inputs as we like. And we're going to try and figure out what the relationship is between the inputs and the outputs. The first thing we notice is that the non-inverting input goes to ground. Now recall that one of the basic characteristics of an op-amp is that it tries to operate in such a way that these two voltages, that the inverting and non-inverting inputs, are the same. So that means that the voltage here, that the inverting input is in fact is equal to zero, and we call this a virtual ground. A virtual ground because it's obviously not connected to ground, but it looks like ground. The voltage is zero, and no current goes into it. Now, on the real ground, of course, the real ground will be, in fact, uh, zero, and you can put as much current into it as you want, and it will not change from zero volts. In this case, of course, we're putting no current in. So, um, as we begin to look at the circuit, and we notice the voltage goes in here, and this other end is resistor side the ground, we realize we have a current flowing in here, and we'll just call it I1. And we have a current flowing here, I2, and a current flowing in here, I3. And we wonder where is that current going? Well, it's not going into the virtual ground because it's a high impedance. In fact, uh, the only place it's got to go is right here, it's through R4. So this becomes I3. The other interesting thing to note is if we look at the direction of the current, polarity at this end of the resistor will be positive, positive, positive. Likewise, here positive, and notice that that means that this end over here is negative. That means that the output here, in fact, is negative with respect to the input. And we would expect that because this is an inverting input. So therefore, the output is going to be the opposite polarity of whatever goes in. So now let's see how we can determine what the relationship is between input and output. The first thing we notice is that uh, I1 is uh, equal to V1 divided by R1, that's Ohm's law, and I2 is equal to V2 divided by R2, and I3 is equal to uh, V3 divided by R3. And then, of course, we just finished stating that since these currents do not go into the input of the alpha amp because it's high impedance, they must go in this direction through R4. And so, therefore, I4 is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. But the other thing we notice is that this end of R4 is attached to the virtual ground, and this end is attached to V out. And because the current is flowing in that direction, this is, in fact, negative. So now we can write another equation which says I4 is equal to minus V out divided by R4. So now what we're going to do is we're going to equate uh, this expression and this expression. And uh, when we write this one, we're going to substitute each one of these individual values here into it. So now we can write that minus VO over R4, that's I4, is equal to I1, which is right here, V1 divided by R1, plus I2, which is right here, V2 divided by R2, plus I3, which is V3 divided by R3. And uh, therefore, of course, we can uh, cross multiply and we can say that V out is equal to, let me just stick the minus in front of all of these things, V1 times R4 over R1 plus um, V2 times R4 over R2 plus V3 times R4 over R3. So now this uh, looks like a fairly complicated expression, but um, we can simplify it uh, enormously. Uh, we can use it in this general form as it is now, or we can do something very, very interesting with it. What we're going to do is we're just simply saying let all of these R's in the bottom here, R1, R2, R3, 
are all equal the same value, let's, let's say like that. So we'll just simply say let R1 equal R2 equal R3 equal Rn. And uh, we're gonna let R4 equal R, and we'll call it F. We'll call this F for feedback. So now notice what happens. All of these resistors at the bottom here are the same, it's Rn, and this is just simply Rf. So then we could say VO is equal to minus V1 plus V2 plus V3 times Rf feedback divided by Rn. And notice what we have. We have uh, an output voltage was equal to the sum of the individual voltages times some kind of a gain here. And of course, we could make the gain equal to one if we wanted to. And so that's why this is called an inverting summer, because it sums or adds the inputs and then it inverts the polarity. This uh, type of circuit uh, has a number of applications. Uh, perhaps the uh, one that would come ready to mind would be in the audio industry, where these might be in inputs from uh, different uh, musical instruments. And uh, so we could combine them to make uh, a one track. Now, uh, in this particular example, you might wonder, how can we control the, the volume of each individual input? Well, there's several ways we could do it. We could, uh, attach uh, each one of these to their own op amp and control the gain of that op amp. Or what we could do is we could modify the input of this circuit slightly. And uh, so let's see how we might possibly do that to make this an audio uh, application. So we'll make an audio mixer. The way we would do that is we have voltage in, let's call it one, and it would go to some sort of potentiometer. And uh, we might make it a 1k potentiometer, let's say. So imagine if this is one volt, then the current flowing here is like uh, one milliamp. Now then uh, we take this and uh, make this uh, any value we'd like pretty well, but let's uh, make it uh, substantially larger than 1k. Let's make it, let's say, 50k. And this goes into our summing node. And then we would take the next one. Okay, this one is to be V in two. And uh, this would also go into the amplifier. And then of course we have our feedback with this over here. And just to keep things very simple, we'll just uh, make this uh, value 50k. And notice what happens. The output from here is going to be some fraction of V in one plus some fraction of Vn2. So we could easily put uh, two or three or four or five or six or 10 different musical instruments or microphones into each of the inputs. And by adjusting this potentiometer, come up with a different value or the combined value here. And uh, we could of course also control the overall gain by adjusting this pot but rather than doing that, it would be much simpler if we would simply put this into yet another amplifier that would allow us to control the gain separately. So we would do something like this. And then we might control this, use this as our master gain control. And because this is an inverting amplifier, 
followed by an inverting amplifier, then there's no phase change. This, in fact, is a positive output, and these are positive inputs. So there's a very simple example of how we might use uh, an operational amplifier to make a very uh, simple, effective circuit. If one was to try to do this using transistors, of course, we'd have all kinds of biasing configurations and nonlinearities to worry about and all that kind of stuff. But with uh, op-amps, it becomes uh, really, really, really easy.